What makes a good friend? Is it someone who does fun stuff with you? Someone who makes you laugh? Is a good friend someone who introduces you to new snacks? Yum! Or someone who loves the same books and movies you love? A friend can be all of those things, but a true friend is so much more. The writers of Proverbs says, a friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. That means a true friend can laugh with you, but they're also ready to sit and listen when you're hurting. A true friend is there to help when you're frustrated. And sometimes this stuff can feel like a foreign language. When you mess up, a true friend is willing to forgive. Everybody, everywhere needs a friend who is always there. A friend who loves like Jesus. And you know the best way to find a good friend? Choose to be a good friend to those around you. When you use your words and actions to show that you care, others can see God at work in you. That's why friendship is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. a friend who is always there. Jesus, you are the one. Cause you showed me that you always care. And you gave your life and you rescued mine. You showed that you really do love me. So every step I take and the words I say will be filled with your love so the world can see. Hey guys, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about friendship while we take a look at what makes a good friend. Ooh, some tea for me? Thanks, friend. I was gonna drink that. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about friendship. 
which is using your words and actions to show others you care. Now, what do you like to do with your friends? We take our bikes over to these awesome trails and ride. Well, me and my friends play a lot of video games. <laughs> Couch potato? I prefer sofa, spud. Also, we're building a robot. Cool, and totally geeky. I resemble that remark. Oh, and we are friends. Oh, for real. We do this show together. And our secret handshake. Oh, yeah. I love our secret handshake. Oh, and uh, we got a set of friends joining us today who do something even more awesome together. Wait, 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 let me guess. Skydiving, domino tricks, uh, collecting hot sauce, competitive bug eating, deep sea noodling. None of the above. Well, what do they do? Our new friends, Chris and Sandra, just so happen to be great at harmony. Tell me more. I'll let them do it. Hey, guys, come on in. Hey. hey how's it going? How's it going? Good to see you. Hey, Chris and Sandra, we are so excited to have you here with us on Story Lab. Oh, yeah, thanks for having us. Oh, yeah, I've been looking forward to it. So, we have a couple of questions for you, okay. and I'll start off by asking the first one. How did you guys meet, and when did you guys start working together? Ooh, Ooh that's a good question. Chris, why don't you answer it? Okay, sure. Uh, so, Sandra was born and raised in New York, mm -hmm. and I live down here, okay? But when Sandra, at a young age, signed a record deal, okay? Ooh. And she got a recording contract to record down here where I live for weeks at a time, and we happened to meet on one of her trips. And thankfully, she never went home, okay? <laughs> and to this day, we still work together, we sing together, and we even run a band together. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We have a really fun party band, so we like to say that we are the party. We're the party. <laughs> and not only do we get to perform and sing together in this band, but we also work behind the scenes creatively right. to put everything together. So I handle a lot of the things that you see visually on stage from wardrobe, choreography, and Chris handles the music. He's the music director. So working together is so great because we know that if one of us misses something, one of us is gonna catch it. That's right. That's good. So speaking of that, what do you guys enjoy the most about singing together? Ooh, that's good. Well, uh, my favorite part is really getting to travel the world together. So we get to perform in front of really, really massive audiences. Uh, but musically speaking, uh, I would have to say this. So we get to cover the entire musical spectrum. Now, what I mean by that, see, I like blues and R&B, mm -hmm. and Sandra really likes to rock and pop. So when we work together, we can cover the entire musical spectrum, and it makes for a lot of fun. Yeah, working together is really so much better mm -hmm. when we are together and we really lean into one another's strengths and we blend well together, yeah. so working together is great. And if you ask our six-year-old at home what our family <laughs> motto is, he will say, together, together is, is better. better. That's right. <laughs> well, speaking of together is better, we would love to hear you guys sing together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, that'd be fun. Okay, so here's a song that I wrote a long time ago. It's called Love Like You. And there's a really special line in this song, and it says this, the world is better when we're working together to share God's perfect love. Okay, so I'm gonna teach it to you and then Sandra, you can jump in and we can all jump in together. Okay. It goes like this. The world is better when we're working together to share God's perfect love. Come on, Sandra, here we go. The world is better when we're working together to share God's perfect love. All right, everybody, you too, come on. The world is better when we're working together to share God's perfect love. Well, okay, you guys sound yeah. great. Yeah. Okay, right, now harmony. I wanna do it again, but I wanna teach you something about harmony. Mm -hmm. Now harmony is when multiple voices sing different things, they come together to make one beautiful chord. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's all sing it together again. We'll sing what we just sang, and on the second time, I'm going to sing a harmony part. Okay, right. let's do it. One, two, three, come on. The world is better when we're working together to share God's perfect love. Now here's the harmony, here we go. The world is better when we're working together to share God's perfect love. One more time, everybody, here we go. The world is better when we're working together to share God's perfect love. And that, my friends, is what, what happens when voices work together in harmony. That was amazing! <laughs> thank right. you. It's fun. Listen, thank you guys so much for taking the time out today to join yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. Hopefully we can come back soon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Ecclesiastes. 
Much of Ecclesiastes was written by someone called the teacher, who was likely Solomon. Solomon became king while he was still very young. God told him to ask for anything he wanted, so Solomon asked for wisdom, and God gave it to him. Solomon showed such wisdom that people came from far away just to see him. Solomon lived a full life filled with riches and fame and anything he could ever want. But at the end of his life, he began to think about and question what really matters. In Ecclesiastes, Solomon shared what he learned about life under the sun, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. As King Solomon grew older, he started to see that being super smart or famous or rich cannot make you happy for very long. In chapter four of Ecclesiastes, he talked about a guy who works super hard, super long hours. <laughs> money, 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 money. <laughs> hey, dude, I'm not everything. And then the man looked around and realized he wasn't happy. There was nothing and no one he really cared about. Who am I working so hard for anyway? Bottom line, this guy had no friends. He had no one to share his life with. King Solomon used that setup for these next verses that pack a big punch. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Now, you probably hear things all the time like, um, you do you, follow your heart, go after your dreams. Now, there is some truth and wisdom in those words, but at the same time, they can push you to go it alone and just focus on yourself. And that can leave you feeling yeah, pretty empty. After all, we are designed to be friends with God and with each other. Solomon went on to write, Suppose either of them falls down, then the one can help the other one up. But suppose a person falls down and doesn't have anyone to help them up, then feel sorry for that person. Here's the first thing to remember. A good friend can help you. Maybe you trip while running on the playground and face plant in the dirt with a skinned knee. When that happens, you definitely want a friend close by to give you a hand up. But it could also mean that you crashed and burned on your last math test. A good friend might be able to step in and help you study and understand. Let's check out the next part of the verse. One person could be overpowered, but two people can stand up for themselves. It's so important to remember that a good friend can stand up for you. Sometimes people who are hurting will hurt others. Chances are there's someone in your life who ignores you, says hurtful things to you, or talks about you behind your back. That's always hard to face, but when a friend stands up for you, it's a lot easier to bear. Now let's wrap it up. Solomon finished, and a rope made out of three cords isn't easily broken. See, the only thing better than one good friend is two. In the ancient world, rope made out of three strands was the gold standard. It could withstand just about anything. If one friend can help, encourage, and stand up for you, a group of three friends can do that even better for each other. Some people think that Solomon wasn't talking about another person here, but rather God. If both you and your friend trust God and are choosing to follow Jesus every day, your friendship will be even stronger. You can encourage each other daily to grow and be more like Jesus in everything you do. Let's take a look at all of that together. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Suppose either of them falls down, then the one can help the other one up. But suppose a person falls down and doesn't have anyone to help them up, then feel sorry for that person. One person could be overpowered, but two people can stand up for themselves, and a rope made out of three cords isn't easily broken. Looking back on his life, Solomon realized that it wasn't the money or fame that brought him joy. It was the gifts of God, including the people in his life. The end. Wow. I mean, we spend so much time just wanting more money and stuff. But Solomon had all that stuff, and it didn't make him happy. That's right. It was the people in his life who mattered most. So what's our part in the story? We weren't designed to live life alone. Even Jesus modeled how important it is to have friends when he chose his 12 disciples. If Jesus needed friends, we certainly do too. But not just any friends. That's right, you wanna choose friends who help you, who encourage you and stand up for you. And you can do the same for them too. 
Now, you might not feel like you have really good friends or that the friends you have don't treat you very well, but the best way to get a good friend is to be a good friend. Be friendly to everyone, but look for someone who enjoys the things you enjoy and makes wise choices. Someone who loves, like Jesus. And you might have to step outside of your comfort zone a little and maybe invite a kid you don't know very well to play a game. Keep your eyes open at school and church and maybe be willing to try a new activity where uh, you could meet a new friend. Because having a good friend can make all the difference in the world. You got it. See you next time. So here's the thing. Choose your friends carefully. Friend, do you think we can sing harmony? I mean, it can't be that hard, right? Um, oh, come on, it's gotta be someone's birthday out there. Let's give it a go. I'm not sure about that. Come on. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next, next time. time. All right, on three, happy birthday. Let's go. Are, are you One, sure? One, two, okay. three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Zeke, 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 Zeke. It's their birthday. We're not trying to scare them. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah. yeah.